Hi everyone, I'm Christy from Garden Nerd and this is an unboxing of something I was just recently sent by the folks at Greenstock and it is a vertical gardening system which I'm going to test out. I'm going to really put it through the ringer too because I am not a big fan of vertical gardening systems but their irrigation system seems to impress me. So we shall see if it works, if their engineering actually works in practice. So I wanted to unbox it for you because it comes pretty conveniently packaged as well. So first thing that comes out of this box is the mover. This is a, a rolling, it's got five, one, two, three, four, five, six casters and the stackable units sit on top of this so that you can rotate it toward the sun, which is something that I also feel like is a really important thing to do because most of the time when you plant something in a vertical garden, it doesn't move. And so you end up with a dark side of the moon with nothing growing on that side. So this way you can rotate the plants toward the sun and get even sun exposure, which is cool. This thing comes packaged just like this. So it's pretty cool. It's got a little handle and all of the uh, layers are stacked and the watering system is inside. So ideally you're going to plant this with five cubic feet of soil, 30, there are 30 pockets to plant in, and it says water with two and a half, 2.25 gallons. So we're going to put this thing together and test it out. They're loud. Oh, and it's made in the USA, which is good. Okay. So this looks like the top and it has measurements for how high to fill it. If it's a three level, a four level, or a five level. I asked for a five level that is in green because it's garden nerd colors, had to. And this is where you pour the water. And then apparently uh, these discs hold water and have little holes in them. They drip through to the soil below uh, that go on the base of each level, or I should say at the top of each level. The first thing we're going to do is fill each of these levels with potting soil. So, and you are supposed to fill this all the way to the top. And I'm leaving a little bit of space because I am planting seedlings. If you're planting from seed though, fill it all the way to the top because soil does settle over time and you will want to have enough in there. Okay, so make sure the drainage hole is exposed. And these guys are over here. And this is going to sit right on top here. But first, before I put this in place, I'm gonna plant my seedlings. So the first thing on my bottom level, I'm going to alternate marigolds and alyssum. So I'm gonna put marigolds here. Ooh, smells like pot. And alyssum here, doo, 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 like this. So always break up the root ball. Remember, always break up the root ball when you plant. Stick it up to the soil level and backfill. I like to let water do the settling for me so I don't really push down on those at all. Dig a little hole, break apart the root ball, stick in the soil, backfill. We do that all the way around. Not that I know what pot smells like, by the way. Is that why they call them pot marigolds? Huh, never thought about that before. Anywho, so this layer is basically planted. I'm gonna give this two rips because it's pretty, been in there a while. Now, water level and the little holes have to line up to each of the little petals. We'll call these flower petals. So that's gonna line up like that. And then I can put, and you might want to angle your plants out a little bit so they don't get smushed. Okay. Uh, the next layer, this locks into place. There are feet. Let's see, if, did I do it? Not quite here. There we go. Now it's settled in. It locks into place really nicely. And you can take this apart. Once it's together, it doesn't lock into place forever. You can take this apart each season 
replant and reassemble if you want to. Because it's certainly easier to plant things by taking it apart. Okay, so for the next layer, I'm going to do a little bit of basil. I'll do basil. My wild card parsley. We'll go back here. The smaller the seedling, the easier it is to get it in there. But it does have pretty deep, this is at least 10 inches, so that's pretty good. Sizable. Because as you know, probably, the bigger something is, the less likely it is to dry out more quickly. So size matters uh, in this circumstance. Okay. Next layer. Three, four, five, six. So for my next level, I'm going to do some lettuces and more, uh, let's see, probably some basil here. Okay. So the instructions say that you can water this after you plant each level or if it's too heavy to lift, which this is fairly, this is, you know, it's not light with just the soil in it. So with wet soil, it'll be a lot heavier to lift. You can plant them all before you stack them, but honestly, I think this is an easier way to do it. Plant it and then put the next la layer on and then plant it and then water it all at the end. That's what I'm get. that's what I'm going to do. I might need help getting this. I can't really see where I'm landing. And these collard greens have been a little chewed on. We'll do the rest of the lettuces. These are a red oak leaf lettuce. The instructions also indicate that you should add fertilizer when you put your soil in the pot. So the fertilizer is already mixed in. I'm probably going to water with some kelp emulsion afterwards separately so I'm doing that because kelp emulsion helps reduce transplant shock which is important when you're transplanting things. So I realized at this point that I forgot to put the water tray uh, on top of each layer so I need to go back down all the way to the bottom and put it in which is this is why <laughs> this is like live television okay don't forget the water tray. Uh, so now the last watering tray goes in place. So the last one, ugh, nobody dies, uh, goes here. You put your watering tray in place. Try not to squish any of your veggies like I did. And it seems to be, it's settled in nicely. Looks good. So on my top row, I'm very excited. I grew loofah from seed. Da -da -da, loofah. So we're going to do three loofahs. Grow your own scrubber sponge, you know what I'm saying? One, two, three, like this. Two eggplant here and here. And uh, another collard, because I can. Right? Let's see what happens. So this last collard green will go here. I'm excited to be growing loofah. I tried growing loofah once before and it did not work. Uh, it dried out too quickly. So this is one of those particular challenges that I want to put the green stalk to the test on. Let's see if it can stay moist enough to support the water needs of loofah vines. And ordinarily you would trellis a loofah, uh, but I'm gonna, we're gonna see which wins, gravity or uh, phototropic behavior. Um, phototropism is where it the vines will reach toward the sun. So it will try curving up, but then gravity will pull it down. You can do that uh, with vertical gardens with peas and cucumbers, and um, usually gravity wins. So we'll see, it might look pretty, it might look weird, it probably will look like an alien, but hey, it's all right. So I'm pointing my, my uh, eggplants out a bit to uh, make room for the water tray that's going to go here in a moment. Always break up your root ball. See, because when, when they go around and around in a circle like that and you stick them in the ground, they'll just keep going around and around in a circle. So you want to break up the root ball a little bit, give it a tug, and point it in a new direction. 
and then it will start to grow and fill in the space below. I have a feeling maybe one of the casters is locked. <laughs> we'll see. So these loofah vines have grown pretty well in under grow lights and they've been hardened off to come outside. So I'm liking the way this comes apart easily so that you can change things out seasonally. So far so good. And the fact that it doesn't look like there's much that can break. And the fact that you're growing in soil makes me very happy because hydroponics, you have to make sure the pH is right and soil, you just let the microbes do it for you. So that's right. Soil microbes determine the pH of your soil. Fungal dominant soil is more, uh, is more acidic and bacterial bacterially dominant soil is more alkaline. So this is officially planted. Now we put the water tray in, in place, which is pretty substantial. So this is going to go where these lock in on the edge of each flower petal. Don't squish the basil or the eggplants. Ta-da! So this is your watering mechanism. Good old fashioned watering can or hose and you fill it all the way up and it's going to percolate down through the layers into each watering tray and disperse equally all around all the soil. So this, is, this design is meant to solve the problem of having too much water at the top and not, a, not enough at the bottom and you don't have to water the whole thing. So we're going to give this a test and see what happens. So now I'm going to wheel it into place and I'm leaving enough room so I can rotate it daily or every other day so that it can get full sun. It's important to move this on a smooth surface, a flat surface. If you don't have a smooth surface, you need at least two people to do this. These wheels are now unlocked and they move very freely and it rotates, you can see, pretty, pretty darn easily uh, to expose different layers of or different sides of the plant. Now, here I am with my two gallons of water. Let's see how much of this it takes to fill this up. I think it's going to take more than two gallons. Yeah, we're going to need more. So you'll need probably three, three gallons of water to fill this up. It is draining down to the next layers. You can hear it gurgling down through all of these to each layer. And I hear it. It's like a river. Okay, it has been a little over seven weeks since we planted the green stalk. And as you can see, stuff actually grew. And I think I mentioned in the beginning that I'm, I'm kind of not impressed with uh, vertical garden systems. They're a bit of an uphill climb to begin with, most of them. But I have to say, I am impressed with the watering system here. Um, because the water, you pour it in the top. Oh, and by the way, we figured out what this piece is for. It, it is for plugging the hole on the top and it make, makes it so that you can pour five uh, levels worth of water in here. It's about two gallons and, and it, it fills all the way up and then you pull the plug off and the water goes in. So you can hit your measure mark and then fill in. So that's what that's for. So we discovered that along the way. Now there are these trays in between each layer that distribute the water equally all the way down and it actually works. I'm impressed with that. So you can see we've got some really good growth on basil and sal um, uh, lettuce, salad greens. The, we ran into a couple of caveats, uh, the first of which being I forgot to add fertilizer to the soil before I planted everything. So I've been adding worm castings and some kelp emulsion to the water, uh, but worm castings directly in and some fertilizer directly in, which is a little harder to do once you've got the plants in there. Uh, but still, we are seeing some growth with the collard greens. There have been some cabbage worms. 
Uh, we've been harvesting basil. I've already made a batch or so of pesto. And our uh, loofah is trailing down. You can see we've got some eggplants that are growing. There are three set on this on this plant and there actually there's two more that are starting to set fruit here and we've got one back here nope two and a third starting to set fruit back here so this is actually a viable gardening system for me I'm happy with it uh, we've been harvesting some lettuces I do want to say they really mean it when they say fill it all the way to the top with soil because when your lettuces are planted this uh, even this is about one knuckle an inch and a half down, that's where my soil level is. Um, the lettuces don't have a chance to, uh, you know, reach out as they would like to. So you get a little bit of dead, dead lettuces under here. Uh, but otherwise, it's producing really nicely. I would say that the green stock is a total success. If, and certainly because we got the, the mover that's on casters, it makes it really easy to turn and rotate toward the sun each day. So we do a little third of a turn of a full turn. So like 20 degree, that's not, it's like 20 minutes on the clock. <laughs> so go to, go to four o'clock and then eight o'clock and then back to noon with the, um, the rotation every day and it gets equal sunlight. So it's a pretty cool thing. So, so green stock pretty much has my vote for a really good product. Way to go green stock. If you like this video, share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications so you'll find out when our next video comes online. Go to GardenNerd.com for all your gardening needs and happy gardening!